Um, okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about um, the central dogma of biology and how to model it. So the central dogma uh, refers to the flow of information from DNA to mRNA to proteins in the cell. And this is sort of uh, kind of like the uh, building block of all of life. Um, and uh, just as a note, I don't really agree with the term, uh, the actual name of it, because uh, usually a dogma refers to like a religious dogma or like ideological dogma or something. Uh, but this isn't really that type of dogma. This is actually um, a rigorously proven uh, scientific fact. It's really one of the one of the biggest discoveries of the past century. Um, but everyone else calls it the essential dogma, so I'll just also call it what everyone else is calling it. Um, Okay, so I'm going to give you guys like a very brief overview of the biology. Um, and if you want like more advanced information, I'll put a link in the uh, description too for more advanced uh, lesson on the biology of it. But yeah, I'll give a brief overview and then we'll talk about um, a simple, uh, simple ODE model. Okay. So within, um, within a cell, we have DNA. And then uh, the DNA has genes. And um, so this isn't totally realistic because in, in real life, a gene could be spread out sort of across different segments of the DNA. But for the purposes of this video, I'll just say that, uh, that this here is just a gene. And um, the gene has instructions for making what's called uh, RNA. In this case, it's called messenger RNA. So this process is called um, transcription, and what happens here is that a, uh, a protein called RNA polymerase attaches to the DNA and usually uses this section of DNA as um, instructions for how to put together a strand of uh, messenger RNA. So this is called transcription. And um, so the RNA exists for a while in the cell and at some point uh, becomes degraded. So. This is just a modeling symbol for, for when an element that we're modeling um, has some decay rate. So it eventually breaks down and disappears. And so while the RNA is, uh, is floating around in the cell, it can be used to um, create proteins. So just see that this is like protein here. Uh, sorry about my bad handwriting, by the way. So um, for everything important, like equations and stuff, I'll show you guys the uh, typed version. But, you know, for like drawings and stuff, I guess uh, just have to deal with the bad handwriting for now. But uh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so, so the RNA strands uh, can be used to create proteins. Um, and this process is called translation. So this, is, uh, this occurs with the use of uh, ribosomes. Um, they pair with the RNA to uh, string together um, amino acids, which can then be folded and uh, folded into a protein. And so the protein, uh, just like the RNA, um, exists for a while in the cell and also has um, a degradation rate. Um, so it's like I said, like this is uh, sort of the building block of almost all life. Um, extra points if anyone can name an exception where information flows uh, the opposite way from RNA to DNA. If anyone can leave a comment um, saying like what, what a case is when that happens, I'll be pretty impressed. But 99.99% uh, .99 of the time it's, it's going this way. DNA to RNA to uh, proteins. And then the proteins um, carry out uh, various functions within the cell. They, they sort of do the work of the cell. Um, so this is super important and if something gets like screwed up here in this process, it can be uh, really a disaster. So for example, if a, if a gene is getting um, expressed uh, too much or not enough, or um, it's getting expressed with a mutation, like a mutation in the DNA can uh, sometimes screw up the function of the protein so it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Um, if something like that, like that happens, that can be really disastrous and can lead to like cancer or other uh, diseases. So this is um, a very important process. And uh, so next we're going to talk about um, a simple ODE model of this. But before we get there, I just want to point out we have 
four rates that we're interested in. So I think for ODE models, it always helps to kind of draw things out so we can sort of see what's going on. But there's four rates here. So there's the, this here is the production rate for, um, for RNA. And then we have a degradation rate for RNA. And then we have the production rate for the protein. And then we have the degradation rate for the protein. Um, okay, so let's get into some of the math of it now. Um, okay, so this is the system of ODs we're going to be using to model the central dogma. Um, so first of all, I just want to say, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see diff differential equations, uh, my first reaction is to just be like, like, oh my gosh, this is really scary. Um, I hope no one asked me to like integrate something or whatever. But, uh, but don't get too worried because um, we're going to go through this uh, step by step uh, and explain each term. And you guys are going to see that... Um, it's actually pretty simple and intuitive. So I, I know it looks intimidating when you first see it, but um, you guys are gonna see it's actually like pretty simple. Um, okay, so let's get started. So uh, the M variable is for mRNA, like we discussed, and then the P variable is for protein. And we're interested in the derivatives with respect to time. So if you're working with engineers, you may also see it written like this with a dot. So um, this notation with the variable and the dot just means uh, the derivative with respect to time of this variable. Um, okay, so it's like we said in the drawing, there are, there are four rates that we're interested in. So the first one, uh, K sub M, is the um, production rate for the mRNAs. So this is the rate at which they're being uh, transcribed from the DNA. Um, okay, so pretty simple. Um, the next one, gamma sub M, is the degradation rate for the mRNAs. And by the way, uh, sorry about using Greek variables. I'm not trying to do that to be fancy or show off or whatever. I'm actually just doing that because this is kind of the convention. And a lot of the time, uh, gamma will be used for the uh, degradation parameter. So um, just trying to keep it consistent with, with that. But uh, but yeah, so this is the uh, degradation rate, and this is multiplied with the current abundance of the mRNAs. So um, this is because the the degradation uh, you need you need mRNAs for there to be degradation. It's it's some fraction of them that are being degraded. Whereas with the production, this is an independent term because uh, this doesn't this is happening regardless of the current abundance of mRNAs. But the degradation, whatever is being degraded is some fraction of uh, of the current mRNAs. So that's why you have this, uh, this multi multiplication here. Um, okay, so for the proteins, the degradation rate is basically the same. We just have uh, a, a different parameter, gamma sub P, for the protein degradation rate multiplied by the current abundance of the protein. And then, but there is a difference with the production rate because you'll see here we have our uh, production uh, parameter k sub p, but this is being multiplied with the current abundance of mRNAs. So this is because um, for there to be proteins produced, you need mRNAs. Like you, you so the mRNAs get produced. Just uh, this is like a constant, um, constant rate of production that just depends on the DNA that's just there all the time. But for the proteins to be produced, we need mRNAs to make that happen. So that's why uh, the protein production rate uh, depends on the abundance of mRNAs. So that's why we have this uh, multiplication in this term here. Um, okay, so that's basically the whole model. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it's pretty simple, but you guys are gonna see we can use this, uh, this simple foundation to really model a lot of uh, complex things, especially when we start talking about more than one gene and how they interact. But yeah, it's, it's good to sort of start with uh, yeah, simple model, and then we'll use this foundation to to get to more complex things. Um, so one other thing, I'm not going to go too much into like the math analysis here, but one quick thing is I'll show you guys how to find the uh, steady states of these equations. So um, so steady states. So if you guys remember about uh, differential equations and um, sort of how to find the steady state, and by steady state I just mean sort of uh, a state where a state where there's no change occurring, so things are steady, just no change happening. So if you guys remember, um, 
the derivative is just the rate of change. So if we're looking for a state where there's no change happening, we just set the derivative equal to zero, and then we can solve for whatever we're interested in. So we set the derivative equal to zero, and then, um, and then we can just uh, we can just solve. So you guys can kind of do the algebra here if you want to, but this is going to turn out to be m equals uh, k sub m over gamma sub m. This is going to be the steady state, and it's sort of intuitive because it's really uh, it's yeah the steady state is just the uh, production rate divided by the degradation rate, kind of an intuitive answer. And then um, so for the proteins, it's the same idea. You would just set the derivative equal to zero. And then, uh, and then solve for P. So what you're, what you're going to get when you do that is P equals uh, K sub P times M. Sorry for the bad handwriting. But because remember, you have this, uh, this is the whole production term here, um, divided by uh, gamma sub P. So this is the steady state for P, but if you notice, we still have this, uh, this m term in here. So to really get to really get the steady state in terms of um, just the the constant parameters, we need to all we need to do is substitute this in uh, this in here. So for the final answer, we get k sub p times k sub m over gamma sub p times gamma sub m, which I think is really kind of an intuitive uh, an intuitive solution here, if you think about it. But yeah, so those are the steady states. <clears throat> um, and if anyone's interested in sort of the more, more in-depth math analysis, I'll put a link in the description for, um, for a course on sort of you know, more of this type of analysis, but going deeper. Uh, okay, so that's all for now. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to be talking about how to uh, code up this simulation into Python. Uh, thanks for watching.